it certainly saved my life, I'm sure of it. With having like three young children, I'm, I'm forever grateful. Yeah, I think it's very good. Everyone ought to have it done. Fingers crossed, you know, but things do come along to you and if you can find out before it's too late, it's a good thing. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, I really feel I've made the most of it. Because I, I do the weight clinic as well, the life's, all of it together is really, really interesting. I really do enjoy it. I do like to make a change to people. <laughs> In 2000, the NSF for CHD was published. And um, at that time I was a practice nurse. Um, but I got interested in heart disease and went and did some training and I became one of the CHD specialist nurses for the city. My role there was to educate and set up secondary prevention clinics. Did that, um, very aware of the high mortality rates in the city, but very aware that the NSF was talking about prevention. In 2006 the Joint British Society guidelines were published and they also talked about prevention very aware that we were doing all the secondary prevention but we weren't doing a lot on the primary prevention. I came from the Strategic Development Organisation as Service Improvement Manager for Stroke and recognised as we looked across the pathway all of the issues associated with individuals having stroke in the acute sector, in the community sector, looking at early supported discharge and then sometimes uh, nursing homes. And the realisation that if we could just prevent these people from having that event in the first place, and to me the NHS Health Checks programme is the ideal situation to reach individuals and try to prevent that event from happening um, rather than seeing them go through these pathways. My name's Ron Morris, I come from Bertie Dead, Stoke-on-Trent. The main reason, I had, I had a letter sent to me by the GP, uh, invited me down for a health check, so I thought, you know, why not? I take my car every year for an MOT, so I took myself. I went along on the morning of the health check, feeling okay, you know, nothing was wrong with me, so I thought. So I went in, sat down, uh, start of the health check, uh, I had a cholesterol re reading of 4.4, .4, which he said was fine. Um, she then took my blood pressure, took it again, she took it again on a different machine, she took it about four times in this. So then she took me to a senior nurse who repeated the test and that confirmed it that I'd have to see a doctor then, an emergency doctor. My blood pressure was 282 over 191 and I'm, you know, it's quite high because everybody that saw the results were, wow, you know, that, that's amazing. I suffered very little symptoms for it, mainly a slight headache or a tiny bit of blurred vision, but that's about it I think. I saw the doctor an hour later who repeated the test and she sent me up to the hospital where I was admitted in. I was put on a drip, given various medication, seen by a few doctors and nurses and their reaction when they saw the blood pressure was, you know, wow. I was still walking around basically, but they did a good job on me and uh, got me back right as rain. Well, I've had a few letters over the years, but this is the first one I've responded to and I'm glad that I did. I saw a nurse, Maggie, lovely nurse, because I'm a bit nervous, but she made me feel relaxed and she took my blood pressure. And they asked me to bring a urine sample with me, which I did do. They took blood, um, weight, um, height, um, so on, and it was all very, very good. It was a bit of an eye-opener, really. Uh, I didn't realise my blood pressure was high, or my cholesterol was high. Apparently, they, they both slightly high. Um, obviously, you, you need to watch more what I'm eating. Exercise, more fruit. Hopefully, I'll have another test in a couple of months, and it will be level enough, you know. Up, I toddled to the gym feeling really deflated when I seen all these young girls size eights, thinking, oh my God, I can't go here. Last year, I'd done the Dougie Mac walk, eight miles. I can walk anywhere now. And best of all, I've gone from a size 22 to a size 14. And from a personal level, a few years ago, my husband was called for a health check. And he said, oh, I don't need to go, I'm fine. And I said, well, maybe you should. And after a little bit of persuasion, he went. And I'm very pleased he did, because it was discovered that he had high blood pressure.
Now this is treatable and so now with a little bit of help and some medication he's fine. A few years later he was called again and he said oh I'm, I don't think I need and again I encouraged him to go and it was discovered then that he had type 2 diabetes and he didn't feel ill but he did need help and he did need guidance about his diet. We had a very good good story where um, we had a patient in a village practice who um, he never used to see his doctor. He was about 66, semi-retired. He um, used to see his doctor for musculoskeletal problems. He was a cyclist and played a lot of tennis. Um, he went along after having an invite to have a health check and the nurse who was doing it first of all picked up that his uh, sister had died in her 50s from heart disease. Um, he also suffered from chest pain and calf pain when he was exercising that disappeared when he rested it, um, which is one of the things that we, we ask about in the health checks. He just put it down to not warming up enough when he was um, playing tennis and his calf pain when he was cycling, he thought, oh, I'm going up the hill, that's why my, my calves are hurting. But it always went when he, when he rested it a bit. So he naturally was referred to the doctor and put, straight away put on statins referred to cardiology and he ended up having a triple heart um, bypass and now he's playing competitive tennis all around the country so he would probably have been dead if he hadn't come along for his health check and um, that's how it was picked up. I had a, a gentleman in his 40s that came in to see me he was a heavy smoker, um, over, overweight and his blood pressure was, was very high and he did not want to go on statins. He spoke to the doctor, I phoned to the doctor, and he's cycling now to work every day. He's quit smoking, and that was all because he came for the health check, and he, he felt if he didn't come to the health check and had just to be spoken to about his health, he didn't think he would have made those changes, and he was really pleased that he came. So it gave him a bit of a, a kick. <laughs> One of the gentlemen came in with his questionnaires in hand, one of them about alcohol, um, everything was generally fine, blood pressure, cholesterol, glucose was all normal, um, but I was shocked to find that he was drinking 70 plus units a week. Um, he was shocked in himself that, that when added up that was how much he was drinking and that it wasn't good for him. Um, he didn't realise that there was a recommended daily allowance and that he was well over it. Um, we referred him to his GP to get the necessaries tests done for kidneys and liver because the damage that it caused he probably couldn't see. Um, yeah, he was an at-home drinker, quite relaxed, didn't realise that it was a problem. So, <laughs> but yeah, the doctor's seen him now and um, he's on the road to making things better. A pulse check that was a regular, um, he was, I wasn't happy that it was a regular so we, we got an ECG sorted and um, it turned out that he had atrial fibrillation, uh, which meant he had to go onto warfarin to thin his blood um, due to a blood clot. No, he wasn't happy with me. I think I, I probably caused... He didn't, wasn't happy with the fact that he was on warfarin, but um, I'm happy in the fact that he's alive. <laughs> we did have a, a gentleman in his 60s that came in and his blood pressure was very high and he, was, he flew a lot for his job. So he didn't want to um, have high blood pressure, with, especially flying all the time. And he was another gentleman that decided to do badminton and he's lost over two stone. And yeah, very, very pleased. With stuck on Trent City Council, uh, we do have um, a policy which is the mandate for change, which is about improving the economic um, development of Stoke on Trent and improving opportunities for people to have better jobs and better prospects in the city. But one of the um, strands of that function is about people living independent lives, and that links in, you know, with you know, sort of encouraging people to um, have health checks because obviously what we want to do in Stoke is ensure that you know the quality of life of people is, is the best they can they can have. We're all getting older and it's very important that as we get older we take good care of our health so that we remain as fit and as healthy as we possibly can. I've become involved in the training of um, the HCAs mainly for health checks so I'm the health check trainer in Somerset so they come along and uh, we do two sessions with them. Um, the first session is mainly the theory behind it, looking at what 
why we're giving health checks, what is included in the health check. Um, and then the second session is, um, which is a couple of weeks later, that is more on the um, finishing off the theory, going through the template with them, um, talking to them about how, why patients need to make lifestyle changes and how they can communicate that to um, their patients to get them to take it on board, because that's one of the most important things. And then also the worst bit of it, getting the blood out the finger. <laughs> I spend half an hour with the patients. Um, we start by doing a small uh, blood check for their cholesterol and glucose and um, we then go on to height and weight, um, waist circumference for BMI, um, blood pressure, I go through all their alcohol um, intake, their exercise, um, I fill in all the template, find out family history because that's usually a big one um, and then at the end we discuss their results and what we can do to help them. It, it's very basic sort of advice, but a lot of people sort of just need a bit of reinforcement to help them turn their lives around and be more healthy. Dick, the first thing they want to know is what the cholesterol is. So we do check the cholesterol. That's a big sort of, you know, wow factor. Um, we, they're always interested in the um, blood pressure as well. We have a healthy lifestyle programme, which is quite local, run at um, the health centre in Tunstall. Um, and we can have a 12 month programme of uh, fitness with their own personal coach, or we can have um, a, a Slimming World um, programme for them, depending on what they're going for, if they want to be more healthy or if they want to lose weight. Um, we have certain appointments that they can come to the surgery, we, we can always support them. If they want to stop smoking, we have our own smoking cessation nurses. Basically, if they have a problem, we'll fix it. We have about 15 patients a week, I do, that comes in to see me. When they first come in, they're very, very worried because they know they're going to have their weight done and that really does, first, straight away, it's their weight. I don't want to be weighed. I know I'm overweight. And, and they, that's the first thing they say to you. Um, but once you get into the conversation with them about cholesterol and blood pressure, they're, they're um, more relaxed and they're, um, they look forward to actually going ahead with the, um, the examination and that, yeah. So if they had a high blood pressure, we would explain to them that they need to, we have a blood pressure machine that they, t they take out for a week so they can monitor at home. And then if it's still high, then we refer them to the practice nurse to talk to them, either to go on medication or about more lifestyle changes. Any, if their cholesterol is high or their glucose are high, then I refer them back to me for a fasting blood test just to double check it again. And then I refer them to the doctor to see the results. Um, lifestyle changes we go through. Um, I do a weight clinic as well, so if they ever want to come and see me on a certain day of the week that I, I, can, I can weigh them if they're happy for me to come in and be weighed, if it helps them to lose weight. I'm Ruth Chambers and I'm a GP who works at Furlong Medical Centre in Tunstall in North Staffordshire. We got involved when we called it the primary prevention check rather than the NHS health check just before the national rollout. Um, and that was because we realised how many people in our practice um, have got um, hypertension or diabetes that we didn't know about. We're in a deprived practice and many of the patients don't necessarily come forward with um, symptoms. Um, and for the kind of illnesses I've just said, like diabetes and hypertension, where there may not be any symptoms, then we're not quite so likely to catch them as you might do somewhere else. We always like a challenge when you work in a practice in a deprived area, um, you're up for a challenge. And uh, the number of patients that we have found with hypertension and diabetes that we didn't know they'd got it makes it all worthwhile. And so I'm forever trying to encourage people to um, come to the NHS Health Check. If I see, when I'm seeing a patient in surgery and I see that they've been invited two or three times, then I'll take the opportunity to say, well, you know, why don't you come and be checked out? We've got some very nice practice nurses and they'll um, you know, really go through things with you and try and help you improve your lifestyle. Now that public health um, is based within the local authority, it's really vital that we keep those strong relationships going with our primary care colleagues, um, with our colleagues in the CCG. And this op offers us a very clear route into practices to, carry, to have an ongoing conversation with them but also to talk to our commissioning colleagues in the CCG around common issues be it, be it um, high blood pressure, be it obesity, be it other risk factors. 
We've looked at a number of different models for delivering health checks through Somerset and have chosen to deliver this through the GP practices. We have 75 practices within Somerset, 70, which are, 70 of which are actively engaged in delivering the program. When looking at it initially, there was a, a, a feeling that it really needed to be practice nurses, but I ultimately was able to persuade the practices that healthcare assistants were capable of doing that with the right support from the practices. We've trained to date about 250 people um, to deliver health checks across these practices. As the program has developed and practices have, have developed a better understanding of what we're trying to do and have actually gained confidence um, in delivering the program, they're now coming fully on board. And I think indeed that's also partially because of what they're seeing in terms of what they're finding with their patients and some of the health issues that are coming forward. We're using public money to invest into NHS health checks, so it's very important that that money is used effectively. And what we're trying to do, or making sure we do, is to um, make NHS health checks accessible. In addition to delivering checks through GP practices, we also have um, a number of outreach models. We take the NHS health checks and we operate out of village halls, church halls, community centres, anywhere where there's room for us, you usually find us doing a health check following a series of NHS health checks within a, an area of high social need in Taunton, we identified that the majority of those individuals had a, a severe weight problem, which could potentially in the future lead to an increased risk of a heart episode. So we developed a weight management programme in conjunction with the community. The programme initially ran for uh, 12 weeks. We had approximately 30 people take part. Um, but the good thing is that it remained sustainable after the programme ended and was led by the community themselves. So they took ownership of their, their health problems and they made a difference um, to their community themselves. They know where to measure on the waist to get a waist circumference and what's an acceptable um, measure for them. Mm -hmm. And through helping each other out, they're continuing with their, their walking programme, their weigh-ins and their activity class as well. All of our health checks um, are sent back to the GP of the individual with the individual's consent. We work very, very closely in partnership with the GPs. Any guidance or recommendations that we offer them, um, signposting to physical activity or an appropriate intervention, is reinforced by their GP on a follow-up. I came to Stoke-on-Trent um, uh, around about 2006-07. At, uh, at that time, I was um, really amazed by Stoke and Trent. It's such a wonderful place, wonderful people, amazing history, amazing heritage, potteries, everything. But unfortunately, there are a lot of public health issues here. It's a post-industrial city. We did a lot of in-depth of analysis and the conclusion we came to was that we needed something. We needed public health programmes which were fit for purpose. They were big enough to meet local needs and were designed around local people's needs. Uh, and one of the programmes that we developed was around trying to get uh, a lot of the people who are very, very high risk of heart disease. They didn't know they were at high risk. Their GPs didn't know they were at high risk. They were walking around in the streets and they, had, you know, they, could, they could have heart attacks in the next five, ten years. And they didn't know. Because we were investing quite a lot of money into um, these kind of programs, you really needed to know two or, three, two or three things. First of all, really, you know, who is accessing these uh, services? Because that's just really, really important because reducing health inequalities is really important for Stoke-on-Trent. And I, I believe that the NSSL check program is absolutely crucial to reducing health inequalities for two or three reasons. Firstly, it sort of focuses on people who, who are, wouldn't normally go to their GP. It's a universal service, so everyone gets invited. It's not just the middle class, so to speak. Secondly, it focuses on the illnesses which are going to have the biggest impact in terms of health outcomes, like heart disease. Uh, and thirdly, it focuses on prevention. So from that point of view, it's actually a really important program to reduce health inequalities. So in terms of research, what we wanted to know was, are the right people accessing the service? So we did a lot of work in terms of who comes, who doesn't come, how do we persuade people to come? Really important questions. And those are national questions that as well, the national programme is sort of asking. Roughly about half the people turn up. 
but who are the other half and how do we find them, how do we get them and we're doing lots of further research around that. Secondly, how do we provide a quality service? How can health checks be integrated into the normal day working of a busy general practice? So we did a lot of work around how we can improve the quality of health checks. And finally, um, at the end of the day, uh, what we're really interested in is whether people's outcomes improve. So we've done some work around uh, following up people, doing some, uh, we did a randomised controlled trial and we looked at whether some of the patient outcomes also improved after a period of time. The reason for me the NHS Health Check programme is really important is if we look at the messages coming to us, we all know what we're supposed to do. Okay, no, we shouldn't be smoking, yes, we should be drinking less, thinking about what we're eating and being more healthy and exercising more. But when you come in for a health check, that becomes personal to you. You get your own risk assessment, you understand what that future risk is, and you have the ability to have a discussion with somebody as to what you might be able to do to make some changes to begin to reduce your risk. The one thing that I've always said within the training, it's about the small changes that people make. We talk about 150 minutes of exercise a week. My message is, ask people to start being active. If you're doing one thing, be a little bit more active. If you walk every day, add a few more minutes to that walk every day because it's the little steps that can make a significant difference in reducing that long-term risk. And we're about to embark on a project with Unilever and we're exploring options around using some of their um, a tool that they've developed called HeartAge, which allows, which kind of uh, translates CVD risk into an actual HeartAge. In Stoke-on-Trent, our model has been primarily to commission health checks from GPs. Previously that's involved having um, a LES agree local enhanced service agreement and as we moved over to local authorities that's developed into a more uh, a local authority contract and um, spec service specification. I think the hard age is, is a really powerful tool that potentially we could use and essentially it would work by um, using the data input from an NHS health check to populate the heart age tool, which will then calculate the person's heart age. Um, because normally what happens at the moment, um, a CVD risk engine will be used to calculate a Framingham or QRIS2 score. Um, and if that risk is above 20%, that, that, that risk is communicated to the patient. But often, if you say to someone, oh, you've got a CVD risk above 20%, um, that doesn't really mean anything to them. Where the, the real power in heart age is that it translates CVD risk into age and everyone understands age. So if someone's 60 and their heart age is 70, they can clearly see that their heart is older than they are. But then if you say to them actually, well, if you were to give up smoking, your heart age would be reduced to 65, then they can see actually what, what, that, what those lifestyle changes would would mean in terms of reducing their risk and also in some ways it taps into a bit of their an emotional space because actually what would those extra five years mean to that person and again you know in terms of motivating that behavior change that's where we really need to work to make sure that we use the health check um, as a penny drop moment as a call to action for all those people to say well yeah actually I do really need to consider losing weight now.